everybody welcome back to Jashelle Tech TV so in this video I'm gonna be doing another code music chill session where I'll be coding listening to music and chilling feel free to open your code editor and follow along or you can just watch and hang out so if you've been following along with my code music chill sessions I've pretty much been doing MDN's uh, web development course just to improve my existing skills so um, I finally finished HTML structuring the web. I finished that whole thing and then I also finished CSS styling the web. So I'm pretty much just uh, completing the final assessment on CSS styling the web and I'm so glad I went through all of it to and just strengthen my, strengthen my fundamental knowledge. So the CSS styling the web, well the CSS layout um, assessment that I'm doing, it pretty much covered all the layout stuff like normal flow, flex box grids, floats, positioning, multiple column layout, responsive design, media queries, legacy layout methods, and supporting older, older browsers. So it's a really good refresher, but also good to just learn some new things. So I do recommend this course if you want to just study deeper into CSS layout methods and layout, different layout approaches. It can definitely strengthen your skills in those areas. So this assessment is fundamental layout comprehension and with this project um, it provides you with some raw HTML basic CSS and images and then you have to create a layout for the design which should look like the image below. And then it gives you information on the basic setup. So the basic setup is kind of the layout without um, all the styling and it's up to you to make it look like that and then it gives you the tasks and then assessment or further help instructions so what i'm going to do is go ahead and start with the project setup the github repo is at this link so i'm going to head there and grab the necessary files so i'll start with the index.html on github i like to click on the raw button so that i can just command a command c all right so i'm gonna in vs code new file index.html paste that in and i think i have it on auto save yeah so we're on auto save right now now i'm going to grab the style.css file style.css and then there are some images that I'm gonna grab as well all right so I'm gonna open them all in a new tab to make it easier and just go one by one save as I'm gonna find the new folder I created Create a new folder, call it images, save. Save image, save, save image. You get the idea. Close all tabs to the right. So if I go to VS Code, all my images should already be there. Yep. So I'm gonna open a new window for the actual project to run and open a live server. Okay, so here is the project. Right now, none of the styling is showing up. sure why let's see Style. well you know what let's try something try refreshing yeah still not okay so I'm not sure why none of the images are showing up but now they are okay
That's so weird. I'm not sure why. Like, if I do this, it works. See, they're starting to pop up if I retype. Oh, the image names, the extensions are wrong in the actual repo. So I can hit up MDN and let them know. They may not be aware. So that's one way you can contribute, you know? Small things, small things. Now we have our layout. Now, as far as like the project requirements and everything, um, for me, I, I don't like to like keep scrolling up and down. So what I do is I take like just different requirements or all the requirements um, out of um, a project and I put them into my own checklist because it's much easier to go through check marks and check boxes than just constantly reading a paragraph. So I have all the requirements inside of Notion. Whoa, I'm upside down. No, vertical. Oh, I meant horizontal, right? Okay. Uh, the first task is to display the navigation items in a row with an equal amount of space between the items. So I'm gonna go back to how it's supposed to look. So, so the nav should be this, but right now it's this. So I'm gonna bring this down a little bit. Make that smaller. Do some adjustments over here. Okay, that needs to be in a row instead of a column. So the nav, in, the nav is inside of the nav element, and then we have a UL. Um, list unordered list for the nav so I'm gonna go over to the styling so in the styling I'm gonna come down to the nav nav ul and I'm gonna add a display flex the default for display flex is a row because because um, you can change the flex direction to column and that'll take it back there. So there's no need to uh, specify direction because it's already a row. So it says, so display it in a row with an equal amount of space between the items. So I'm going to add a justify content space between to give it that. So now it's an equal amount of space between the items. So, so we got it looking more like the actual final result okay so we got the navigation in a row and then an equal amount of space so i'm going to check that out check that off not out check it out too so the navigation bar should should scroll with the content and then become stuck at the top of the viewport when it reaches it okay so what we have now is the nav just scrolls as you scroll so they want it to just to be stuck um, when you get to the when it gets to the top so of the viewport so I'm gonna go to the nav and I'm gonna add a position property with a value of sticky so that it gets stuck so if I scroll now right now it's still scrolling so in order for it to become stuck at the top of the viewport when it reaches it, I'm gonna have to add a top of zero so that it stays at the top of the viewport. So if I scroll now, it'll be stuck. And here's a reference on this. Um, this is something I bookmarked just to help me remember this. So with sticky positioning, um, so it's a hybrid between relative and fixed position, just to explain it a little bit more. So it allows a position element to act like it's relatively positioned until it scrolls to a certain threshold, after which it becomes fixed. So an example on MDN that helped me, a scrolling index page where different headings stick to the top of the page as they reach it. So for the next checklist item, the image that is inside the article should have text text wrapped around it so if we go up here so we have an image that's basically just 
on the top of the paragraph article the article paragraph so we want that to like it said they want it to have the text wrapped around it so I'm gonna go over to the HTML just to see where that image is located so it's in the main element with the class of grid and then that's the article element is nested inside that and the image is inside of that if we go over to the CSS we see the grid class here and the image has a class of feature so I'm gonna come over here to the to the style and look for that and I'm gonna add a float of left for that so now that image is floating left and it's kind of really close to the paragraph so I'm gonna give it, go ahead and give it a margin right oops margin right of one pm perfect and this is a really good example of a use case for floats you know for something like this if you want an image to align like i can also like if i just wanted to align the image right i could do that too and as you can see and then i can change the margin left to one em so you can do, you know, however you want to style that, but I'm going to change it back to left margin, right? Okay. Okay. So let's see where we are as far as the lining up with the final results. So we are here. Make that a little bit smaller. So we've got the nav, the blog post looking good. So now we just need to we work we need to work with the columns and then work with the photos so the next checklist item has the article in a side element should display as a two column layout the column should be a flexible size so that if the browser window shrinks smaller the columns become narrower also one thing that this assessment has here is um that I didn't mention earlier, you will not need to edit the HTML in order to achieve this layout. And the techniques you should use are positioning, float, flex box, and CSS grid. So I've already used some positioning there. I've used the float in there. Um, I think I've, did I use positioning? Oh no, I think I just used float and flex box so far. If we go into the HTML, We see article here and a side here and they're inside of grid, the grid class. So I likely wanna go to the grid class to get those into the columns we want. So I'm gonna add a display flex for that. All right, so we got them in two columns. And then the photograph should display as a two column grid with a one pixel gap between the images. So I'm gonna just double check here. If I go to index, go to a side, the photography is inside of a class called a UL class, a UL with a class of photos. So I'm gonna come to the style, go down to photos, I'm gonna add a display of grid, and then a property grid template columns. And then they're going to uh, let me drag this over so we got our grid now as you can see nothing has changed because with grid you do have to specify the the columns so I'm gonna give them so I'm gonna make it into a two column grid and then a one pixel gap Wow <laughs> you see that gap okay perfect now we're lining up a lot now we're looking good for that two column layout now and just to give you a little bit of reference for the one fr one fr um so we use one f we use the fr unit to flexibly size grid rows and columns the unit represents one fraction of the available space in the grid container so by me putting two one frs that's saying that the each each um, column is going to take up one fraction of the available space. Let's say I added one more fraction. Now it's going to be three, but we only want it split up into two columns. So 
however many columns you want you just specify that in the grid template columns um, property and then you can also make the gap as big as you want you can do a 20 pixel gap so now the photos are um, they have a larger gap but for this project they wanted in a one pixel gap so now we can come back to our checklist and check that off everything's in two columns and the columns are a flexible size so if we shrink it this looks good okay so we have met all the requirements um, we've checked all the check boxes we ticked all the boxes we've used all the layout techniques uh, positioning float flex block fl flex box flex box <laughs> CSS grid so um, and MDN also um, disclose and let us know there are a few ways in which you could achieve some of these tasks and there often isn't a single right or wrong way to do things try a different try a few different approaches and see which way works best make make notes as you experiment so I'm going to come back here to the layout, compare it to what we have, and we have achieved what, you know, the MVP of what the, what the client needs or however you want to, you know, play this or MDN. But, you know, if, they, if that's what they want, we've achieved that. Um, but I want to go a little bit uh, a step further because um, if I inspect this, um, as you can see, you know it looks good on desktop but if you make it smaller it's really not gonna give us a great mobile experience so I do want to go ahead and add some media queries this um, module did go over media queries and MDN did not have us do that which I'm surprised um, since this um, topic did cover that so because it covered it I'm gonna go ahead and take advantage of the practice of using which you know I'm already familiar with media queries but um, why wouldn't we incorporate this and give our mobile users a great experience right so let's do that okay so let's go ahead and take a look at the inspect tool again so pretty much when you approach media queries um, you want to start at the point where it really starts to look bad and I'm gonna come down to you see where that navigation starts to break there so let's do let's just go ahead and start at 600 oops so 600 is what we're gonna do our break do our break point so I'm gonna come down here and one best practice is to add a comment and you can say media queries so the next developer is aware which they'll probably know but it just makes the code neater so I'm going to add a media query and do a max width 600 so that way um, after 600 then it'll go back to desktop view so I'm going to start with the nav now right now uh, right nav <laughs> right now the nav is still you know sticky um, I don't know if I want that for mobile peeps you know I don't know if it makes sense to do that so I'm gonna actually take that away for net mobile users so I'm gonna give the nav a position of static so we're back to just scrolling as we scroll and then for the nav ul i'm going to give it a flex direction column so we're back to because you know for mobile users that kind of column look pretty much looks better so if you go smaller all right so for each individual list item let's add a little bit of padding for that and then let's make the text align center. Yeah, that's much better. And then for the uh, grid class, that's um, housing our article in a side, the sidebar. Let's do a flex direction. 
And I'm gonna do a column reverse. So that way, oops, well it's column, but then column reverse. So that way the photos are gonna show up first and then the blog post second. Now for the photos themselves, I'm gonna specify a different value for the grid template columns. I'm gonna use a function called repeat and I'm gonna let it auto fill. So that means it's gonna fill with as many photos as possible instead of specifying like just a fraction. So as many photos that can fit in that space. And then I'm gonna give it, and within that repeat function, the second um, value I I'm gonna add is min max. So a minimum um, size, uh, I'm gonna give each photo a minimum size of 100 pixels and then take up one fraction of the available space. And then I'm gonna widen the gap to 10 pixels. So that looks a little bit better. And I can make the photo smaller, like I can make it 50 pixels. Maybe that looks a little bit better so it's just one row instead of like going over like that. So that, yeah, that looks a little bit better. And I'm gonna explain this. Actually, this, this little snippet of code is something I also got from MDN. Just to explain the little snippet of code I just did in there, that little trick. So sometimes it's helpful to be able to ask grid, grid to create as many columns as will fit into the container. So we do this by setting the value of grid template columns using the repeat function. But instead of passing in a number, you'll pass in the autofill keyword here. And then for the second parameter of the function, we use min max with the minimum value equal to the minimum track size that we would like to have, which in my code, I specified 80 pixels, and then a maximum of one FR, so one fraction of the available space. So that's a cool little trick that I've, a neat little trick that I found, um, just to provide a little bit more flexibility with that. And so we got the photos looking nice there. Now for the, for the blog post, I'm actually going to change the the float here cuz you know as that gets smaller that would just mm. so I'm going to change this feature photo to I'm going to float it none and give it a margin zero auto to center it and then I'm going to give it a width a max width actually of 100% or should it just be a width of 100%? I'll just give it a width of 100%. Yeah, that's good. Um, I think the um, title, the blog post title and photos are kind of close, so I'm just gonna give the article element a padding top of 1 medium. Yeah, so that's a little bit better. So now, we're giving our mobile users a better experience. So if I, so this is our desktop view. I'll make that a little bit bigger. This is our desktop view and then we get down to 600 pixels. It gives us a good mobile experience. So much better. All right, so we basically did a little bit of a stretch here. So instead of just doing the desktop layout, we've also provided um, media queries with this project. So that's pretty much it. Um, thank you all for joining me for Code Music Chill today. I hope you'll join me again next time and that's it. So I'll see you in the next video.